the Germans were able to uh, move back into Metz, and uh, even though they had we'd had patrols in Metz this earlier time, uh, it took us two months to really get into Metz, simply because they had uh, uh, sent maybe five divisions in there to defend it. Later, my company though had the had the privilege of being the first one in the interior. We were ordered to. Uh, try to get into the edge of Metz in a certain spot, and it turned out during the night that there were uh, people, you know, so many uh, guns in opposition, and they discovered what we were trying to do. That we were really pushed back, and we took cover in about in three little houses along the Strasbourg uh, Highway, right outside the city. And uh, we reported that to our battalion commander, and he said, well, uh, stay where you are or come back to where you started or whatever. And I said, well, neither one of those will work. Uh, if we stay where we were, we'd be completely exposed, even though we'd be in the houses, you know, they'd, they'd find out we were there. And the only time that I ever asked, I said, I, I asked for permission to use volunteers. And uh, with some expertise, the battalion staff members said, try it if you want to, you know. And I can't tell you anything else today. And this wasn't smart, you know, big deal, smart. This was, this was the only practical thing to try. Although I, fully expected it to fail. So one direction we didn't, hadn't seen uh, any German fire and uh, it was across a uh, sugar beet field and uh, it was terrible. I, asked, I said, I'm going to go first and you just pass the word that anybody's going with me, just get back on me. And I'm not going to look back. I would truly, I, and I didn't until I went across the, uh, started across the beet field, and we had a lot of rain, and it was very muddy. And the toughest walking I have ever experienced was across a sugar beet field with the beets half out of the ground and the mud all in between because you couldn't see where you were uh, stepping. So that, that was pretty noisy. We got to the place that um, between some houses on the very edge of the, of the city. Uh, we were, their back doors were toward us and toward the field. And we started between those houses and uh, I discovered that there was, uh, I saw a German sentry with a rifle on his shoulder. Uh, so I was pretty sure we'd had it by then. Well, he turned and looked the other way and I, I'll never know why he was, he was I guess, within 50 or 75 feet because it had started to uh, get get light and uh, uh, he didn't sound the alarm and we just walked on through between the houses. By the time we got to a street, there was a, uh, uh, we started seeing German people leaving their, their billets, uh, uh, just hopping out of houses, you know, and starting up the street. Uh, they thought to work. And uh, they were such a surprise, and they were so willing, that particular group was so weary at the time that, that they just handed us their weapons. And, and uh, between daylight and about 11 o'clock, we captured about 500 people with no resistance starting. We had to find a courtyard that that we could close the gates and put them in there, but I believe they'd all stayed there forever if we'd let them. Uh, meanwhile, we passed by a military hospital on this street that we'd entered, and uh, somebody said that wanted to see the officer in charge, and, and uh, so I was a, a few feet back, and by then some of the guys, I was talking to somebody, as we got along, maybe 
talking to some some of the German prisoners. And uh, at the gate of the hospital, there was a tall civilian uh, who said, uh, "If you will wait a few minutes, uh, the commandant would like to see you and surrender the hospital." And I said, well, I, we have very little time. Well, it turned out the commandant was getting dressed, and he came out uh, straightening his uniform and so on. In a very formal way, he saluted and handed me a little uh, very small pistol and said, it's all yours. Now we'll work for you. And um, he, ta he said that he had seven American prisoners that he'd like somebody to visit. Uh, they'd like for me to visit, and uh, of course I couldn't do it right then, but I promised that I would. Um, he then, uh, after we moved on and kind of took position in a couple of semi-high-rise apartment buildings, uh, he sent a messenger uh, uh, inviting me to eat dinner with him. And uh, he was a colonel. Uh, he actually from Koblenz, I think. And I knew his name then. I don't, I don't remember now. But uh, I said, well, okay, tell him I'll come and I'll get to see the guys. And uh, of course, some of my cohorts said, you're crazy. Uh, no telling what he'll do. Well, I, I, uh, I just didn't think this doctor was going to do anything bad. It was a pretty good uh, hot dinner inside, you know, all closed in with candles. And uh, But meanwhile, he asked me to see the Americans. Uh, they were out of, had, were complete out of plaster of Paris. And these guys uh, who were in casts were in concrete casts. Uh, they must have weighed hundreds of pounds. Of course, he couldn't move. Them. But the worst thing was they wanted water because we knocked out their water supply, and, and they had only they'd had only wine for uh, several days, which doesn't quench your thirst, <laughs> as anybody knows. Very pitiful. Well, we immediately gathered up our canteen, can, canteens uh, and shared our water with them, and that. that that was a great experience.